Breaking news, a worldwide outage affecting millions of Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger subscribers. The question remains, what's behind this massive outage? A couple that spent more than a week on the run after statewide Amber Alert is back in custody. We'll tell you what happened during their court hearing just moments before our newscast. And our skies are clearing now, but another system taking shape back to the west arrives here to make for a messy commute tomorrow morning. I'll show you the timeline. Breaking news this noon. If you had trouble logging onto Facebook, Instagram, or threads, you are not alone. Meta experienced a massive outage on this Super Tuesday. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. The mysterious outage affected users worldwide. About an hour ago, I couldn't see any of my feeds, but now it appears to be working. Let's get over to Michelle McConaughey in the WRL Live Center with what we're learning. Michelle. Yeah, so here's what we know right now. Uh, this massive outage affected more than 500 uh, million users on Facebook, Instagram, and threads. I just checked my Instagram. It is now working again. Uh, but some people are still reporting outages. At 1030 this morning, 566,000 people reported outages, but those outages were likely much higher. Some users say they had been logged out of their Facebook accounts, and others got notifications on Instagram saying something went wrong and that their feeds could not be loaded. Meta's spokesperson and did release a statement saying we are aware that people are having trouble accessing our services. We are working on this now. Again, uh, some people have been able to get their uh, systems restored. Uh, Meta has not com commented on the reason for the outages. As soon as I have that information, I'll pass it along. We have more breaking news this noon. Two parents linked to the Amber Alert of an eight-day-old baby from last week are in custody now. Destiny Cothran and Justin Brown were arrested just before midnight and taken into custody. The two are being held at the Durham County Detention Facility. WRL's Chelsea Donovan first broke this story and is live outside the Durham County Courthouse where that couple just appeared before a judge. Chelsea. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. This just happened moments ago. Destiny Cothran and Justin Brown appeared on a video monitor from inside the Durham County Jail. Of course, you'll recall Durham police arrested them late last night. We understand that they were staying at the Sure Stay Plus Hotel in Durham, but they're accused of giving a fake name. And Justin Brown is even accused of using shoestrings to, to tie the door shut to escape arrest or elude arrest, rather, from Durham police. Now, warrants state the couple was illegally staying at that hotel in Durham along Hillsborough Road. Catherine and Brown are accused of giving a fake name to elude that arrest. Arrest warrants indicated that the hotel manager refused to give the couple a room, but the couple stayed in one anyway, which led to those trespassing charges. We learned in court today the couple have outstanding warrants in both Orange and Alamance counties. Of course, they have new charges here in Durham. Now, you'll recall authorities launched a search for Catherine and Brown after the Department of Social Services threatened to intervene for the safety of their son, Jackson, who was born on February 18th at Duke Regional Hospital. This all prompted that Amber Alert. Now, Jackson was found safe the night of Monday, February 26th. So here in court today, the judge gave both uh, of them a $2,000 bond each. They're due back in court next month. We'll have much more on this story in our later newscasts. Chelsea Donovan with that update. Thank you. Live in Durham. Beautiful weather today, but we're tracking our next storm system. It will arrive tonight and bring us a rainy day tomorrow. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is in the WRL Severe Weather Center with a look at what could be a messy morning commute tomorrow. We're trying to get rid of the clouds that are sitting over us right now. They are not going to bring us any more rain today. And gradually those are sliding off to the north and east along with a low pressure system. But behind this, we have this low pressure system along with the front. And you can see how much rain there is across parts of the deep south and along this front. So a significant rainfall for us tomorrow with this next system rolling through. We take a look at future cast for the rest of the day today. We'll see some gradual clearing. But then by the time we get to early tomorrow morning, we start to see the rain rolling back in at six o'clock. It's pushing into the viewing area. Some of that's going to be heavy at times. You can see the yellow and orange color contours here. That's a, uh, signifying some heavy rain. Uh, there may be an isolated thunderstorm, but I'm not expecting there to be any severe weather with this. Once we get past lunchtime, it starts to become lighter, a little bit more scattered, and then eventually starts to pull on out by Wednesday night. Our hour by hour rain chances though for tomorrow are pretty significant. Uh, during the morning commute, it's likely to be very wet for us. We are likely to start to see that tapering off 
off early afternoon with a few isolated thunderstorms. Coming up, I'll show you how much rain we'll see tomorrow and how much we could see on Saturday, too. Thanks, Elizabeth. Today is Super Tuesday, and North Carolina is one of several states and one territory with hundreds of delegates up for grabs. Former President Donald Trump has already won 244 of these delegates, so he needs roughly 1,000 more to capture the Republican nomination. On the Democratic side, President Biden needs 1,969 delegates to officially win the nomination. WRL's Monica Casey is live at the State Board of Elections with a look at voter turnout so far, and Monica, voters will also decide a number of local races. Yeah, Jeff, that's right. It's a busy day. The main takeaway from the press conference put on here this morning is that there have not been any major security issues or inappropriate campaigning at polling places across the state so far. Now, if you are heading out to the polls, it's important to remember to bring your photo ID with you. That can be your driver's license, your passport, or a student ID that's approved by the State Board of Elections. Elections officials say the majority of voters have had ID with them. 695,000 ballots were cast early or by mail. Of that number, only 216 voters had to vote a provisional ballot and bring that photo ID to the county office before the deadline of March 14th. Only about three out of every 10,000 voters had to vote a provisional ballot due to the photo ID requirement. We believe this is a strong sign that the word is getting out that you should bring your ID to vote. Now, elections officials are also reminding voters if you have an absentee ballot, it's too late to put it in the mail today. You should either vote in person or drop that ballot off at your county elections office by 730 of, uh, this evening. Now, officials say 49,000 absentee ballots were requested across the state. So far, 19,000 of those have been counted. Important information there, and the waiting continues. Now, Monica Casey live in Raleigh for us this noon. Monica, thank you. Health professionals say it's not uncommon to feel a bit more anxiety than usual as you head to the polls to Super Tuesday. Experts say anxiety and stress as they relate to elections have been increasing in recent years. Some say people may also report feeling more hopeless this time of year. One psychologist with UNC Health says... It's likely these feelings will continue to grow as November elections get closer. She also says even teens who aren't old enough to vote can be affected. So many of them are really, really invested um, in the future and in the outcomes of, of this upcoming political season, because very understandably, it's going to have a huge impact on their future. To reduce stress, experts suggest reducing screen time and signing up to volunteer with organizations with values you support. And if you have any questions throughout the day, be sure to check our WRL Voter Guide. You can find it on our website, WRL.com. We have information on how you can vote, the candidates on the ballots, and what you need to take with you. WRL is your Super Tuesday election night headquarters. We'll have the fastest results as soon as they're counted. We'll get them to you on WRL TV, WRL.com, and, of course, on our WRL News app. We look for updates on all the big races every 30 minutes after the polls close on WRL News+. Plus. You can find that on Channel 34 over the air, Spectrum Channel 1257, and your smart TV and your mobile devices. And throughout the night, on air and online, we'll have insight and analysis from our NC Capital team. For national coverage, NBC News will have a full wrap-up of Super Tuesday results from across the country at 10 p.m. on WREL. Our team of reporters will have you covered with the local races at 10 o'clock on Fox 50. Then at 11 on WREL, we'll have it all for you, the big local and state races and a recap of Super Tuesday from across the country. A man who worked as a Wake County firefighter faces 20 counts of child sex crimes in Guilford County. WRL's Ken Smith is live in the WRL newsroom with the operation that led to these charges. 
You know, Jeff, this arrest is the result of an ongoing child exploitation investigation across the state that's already nabbed dozens of suspects. Well, 34-year-old Andrew Kenzie is the latest suspect busted on child sex crimes. He's no longer with the Northern Wake Fire Department after being dismissed last week when these charges surfaced. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office charged Kenzie with 10 counts of second-degree sexual exploitation of a minor and 10 counts of third-degree sexual exploitation of a minor. He'd worked for the Northern Wake Fire Department since 2019. Now, Kenzie posted a $20,000 bond and was released from the Guilford County Detention Center. We're, of course, working to find out about his next court appearance. We'll keep you posted. Jeff? Disturbing charges there, Ken. Thanks. Tonight, Raleigh City Council may vote to rezone the area around the planned New Bern Avenue bus rapid transit line. The rezoning would affect 744 properties, raising the maximum height on buildings from three to five stories along the BRT mostly. And a public meeting will start tonight at 7. Firefighters say an early morning fire at a Durham home started by accident. Dozens of firefighters responded to the fire in the 5800 block of Shamrock Road just after midnight. It took about 25 minutes to control the flames. One person who was inside made it out safely. The American Red Cross is helping that person. Let's take a look at stocks now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeting right now, triple digits, down 278 points. NASDAQ also down triple digits, down 256 points. The tech giants are dragging down the stocks today. And S&P 500 in the red as well, down 45 points. Next at noon, the desperate need to get food and other aid into Gaza and where talks stand on getting a truce in place. Also, incredible video of a woman being rescued from a well in Arizona. How long she was stuck 15 feet down and what saved her. Plus, a note unlike any other sent home from school. At 1230, how it could help to avoid gun violence on Wake School's campuses. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. United States Central Command and Royal Jordanian Armed Forces conducted joint airdrops of humanitarian aid into Gaza this morning. Famine is now gripping the Gaza Strip where whole swaths are cut off from food. And Israel blames the lack of deliveries on the capacity of aid agencies. Meanwhile, talks over a new hostage deal entered their third day in Egypt with the goal of getting a truce in place before Ramadan next week. NBC's Raf Sanchez reports from Tel Aviv. Ceasefire talks in Cairo appear to have stalled, with both Israel and Hamas effectively saying the ball is in the other side's court, and it is now looking increasingly unlikely that an agreement will be in place in time for the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which begins on Sunday. Now, with every passing hour, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is deepening. The U.N. warning about a quarter of the population there is facing famine. Earlier today, the United States carrying out a second aid drop over Gaza, delivering some 36,000 meals by parachute. That's according to U.S. Central Command. But humanitarian groups say aid drops are not enough to fend off the looming starvation in the Gaza Strip. Two Israeli officials tell NBC News the military is drawing up plans for a new border crossing to deliver aid by land directly into northern Gaza, where that potential famine is concentrated. They say that crossing would be near Kibbutz Beri, which is one of the kibbutzim that was attacked by Hamas on October 7th. They say no plans are finalized at this point, but it comes after intense American pressure to get more aid into Gaza. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Tel Aviv. Harvard University has provided more than 1,500 documents to Congress in response to a subpoena from a House committee. The documents lay out some steps the school is taking to fight anti-Semitism on campus. Harvard has increased campus security and potentially vulnerable spaces, including student residences. It has also increased police presence and patrols at locations and events where the Jewish community gathers. It's unclear if the documents will satisfy Republican Chairwoman Virginia Fox, who accused Harvard of obstructing her investigation into campus anti-Semitism. Fox is a representative of North Carolina's 5th Congressional District. 
No bond for five of the suspects accused of kidnapping and murdering a 20-year-old Alabama woman. A Birmingham police detective testified that the suspects recorded several videos showing the abuse Mahogany Jackson suffered before she was killed. Investigators say Jackson was handcuffed and beaten and was forced to perform sexual acts at gunpoint. Her body was found the next morning. She had been shot to death. Incredible video out of Arizona showing emergency crews rescuing a woman who fell 15 feet down a dry well in Chandler. Helicopter video captured the moment they brought her back up after being stuck in the hole for up to seven hours. Fire officials say she reportedly had a cell phone with her and called for help. The injured woman was taken to a trauma center. No word on how serious her injuries are. Officials say it's unclear why she was in that area. You can celebrate and support our local arts community this Thursday when WRL presents Big Night In for the Arts, featuring amazing artists including Pierce Freelon and Tiff Merritt, a live performance by award-winning bluegrass musician Trey Wellington, and much more. Help us raise funds to create healthy, vibrant communities through the arts. Watch and donate Thursday at 7 on WRL and wherever you stream WRL. Taking a look at our weather this noon, Elizabeth Gardner over in the WRS Severe Weather Center. When we look at that satellite, there's a lot going on there. There is. Now, we're nice and dry right now. We do have some cloud cover that's lingering that is gradually dissipating across our area. But look at what's happening back to our uh, west and south. Lots and lots of rain, lots of thunder and lightning along this cold front. When it moves through here tomorrow, it's less likely that we'll see a lot of thunderstorms, but it's not completely out of the question. So we will be watching for that. This is a look at the satellite again, our high resolution satellite. Those clouds are exiting quickly. It's a little slower than uh, it looked like it might be uh, earlier today, but we are clearing pretty rapidly at this point. So we have another hour to two hours. We should see plenty of sunshine across the region and temperatures will warm up quickly at that point. We're running a little behind on our temperatures uh, so far, but when that sun comes out, the temperatures will jump pretty quickly. Tomorrow we'll see the rain rolling in during the morning commute between six and eight o'clock. It starts to spread across the viewing area. Some of that's going to be heavy. The yellow and the red color contours or orange color contours are heavy rain. That'll be true up through early afternoon. And then by the time we get to the evening commute, we'll just see some scattered lingering showers. The rain won't be totally over, but it's not going to be steady or heavy like we'll see during the morning commute up through lunchtime. Here's a look at Sanford. There's some breaks in the clouds there. A little bit of sunshine peeking through. It is 59 officially in the triangle. And we're still shooting for 75. I think we'll make it again because we're about to see our skies clearing out. As a matter of fact, in Roxborough, where we're seeing some sunshine at 61 and in Fayetteville with some sunshine 67, 68 in Clinton. So and those temperatures are going to warm up pretty quickly where we're seeing that sunshine. Uh, where we're seeing the cloud cover, temperatures are anywhere from about 5 to 10 degrees cooler than they were yesterday. But again, in Southern Pines and Roxborough, temperatures are pretty close to yesterday. And yesterday we made it to 74. Such a pretty day. Mostly sunny this afternoon. If you're headed out right after work to vote, temperatures at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock will still be upper 60s to right around 70 degrees with lots of sunshine. So it should be a, a good looking uh, afternoon and evening for us. We continue to see warm temperatures. Temperatures will push this ahead through Wednesday all the way into the weekend. And the yellow and red colors indicate temperatures that are above normal. So all the way through Sunday, we'll see temperatures above normal. But on Monday, we'll likely have some cooler air that arrives. 60 degrees is our, is our normal high. We'll be above that really all the way through Sunday. A little cooler tomorrow at 66 because we'll see the rain rolling in. 72 Thursday with some sunshine. And then Saturday will be wet. Temperatures will be in the mid-60s. Uh, the most recent pollen count still had us at moderate. We've not really seen any days at high just yet, so we're just slowly getting the pollen season started. But I'm going to say within at least two weeks from now, we'll start to see these numbers really climbing. We'll start to see the yellow pine pollen and some oak tree pollen as well that tends to start to cause problems for you know folks just with the messy conditions with the pine pollen, those allergens with the oak pollen. Again, Thursday, Friday look pretty good. Saturday, we'll see some scattered showers. I'm going to walk you through future cast for Saturdays so that you can plan and around it. I'll say Sunday is looking much nicer than Saturday, but we'll walk through and talk about how much rain we could see coming up. And happening right now in the WRL Live Center, we're following some breaking news. NC State reporting that they are dealing with several power outages right now. Uh, they did send out an alert saying that power on campus is out in certain areas impacting select phones and also emergency devices. For any emergency assistance needed, call 911. We are working to get more details on this. As soon as we have that, we'll bring it to you from the Live Center.
Newer gadgets called infant formula makers claim to make precisely measured warm, ready to drink bottles. But do they work? Today at 530, Five Under Side's Keely Arthur looks at a recent investigation that shows maybe they aren't. And tonight at 6, new information about the pay dispute that's been plaguing Durham Public Schools for months. WRL investigates Sarah Kruger explains what newly obtained emails show us about questions and concerns raised by school board members before the issue became public. Cookie Monster is fed up with inflation and gold and Bitcoin are soaring. Those are among today's business headlines with Maribel Aber. Both gold and Bitcoin are trading around all-time highs. Gold futures settled at 2,126 an ounce, the highest since the April futures contract was created in 1974. Adjusted for inflation, gold's high is 3,200 an ounce. Uh, that was set in 1980. Now, gold generally rises when interest rates fall, which makes bonds less attractive. And Bitcoin is nearing its all-time high after breaking through that 68,000 level. The cryptocurrency high is just under 69,000, set in November of 2021. More people are filing their taxes for free this year compared to a year ago. The IRS says use of its free file system is up 9.7 percent from last year. About 943,000 taxpayers have used the free option through late February. You need an adjusted gross income of 79,000 or less to be eligible for free file. The system lets you file for free using one of eight IRS partners. You can find details at irs.gov. Cookie Monster is now complaining about shrinkflation in a post on X. The Sesame Street character said, quote, Me hate shrinkflation. Me cookies are getting smaller. He may be onto something. A recent report from Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey said some Oreos have decreased 6% in size by weight. As for how Cookie Monster is dealing with it, he posted, quote, Guess me going to have to eat double the cookies. <laughs> and those are your business headlines. I'm Maribel Abert, the NASDAQ market site. Whole Foods Market will soon be launching smaller stores. They'll be called Whole Foods Market Daily Shop, and they are meant for urban areas. Whole Foods says customers will still be able to pick up grab-and-go meals, recipe ingredients, and weekly grocery essentials. The first Whole Foods Market Daily Shops will launch in New York City this year. The company plans to bring the smaller stores to other cities as well. Remington is closing its factory doors in New York after more than 200 years. 300 people will be losing their jobs, many of whom have worked for the company for generations. The mayor of the village calls it a cultural and financial loss to the tune of a million dollars in revenue. Remington still makes the 700 model hunting rifle and shotgun. A plan to educate families on gun storage safety will be considered today by Wake County school leaders. The new initiative to increase student safety Plus, a landmark abortion ruling overseas is reigniting calls to protect reproductive rights here in the U.S. The action taken that makes abortion a constitutional right. First, here's a look at the winning lottery numbers. Happening right now in the WRA Live Center, Wake County has issued a rabies notice after a fox bit a child over the weekend. Officials confirmed that that fox did test positive for rabies. They say it happened in a neighborhood uh, right near Western Boulevard and 440 in that area. They do say the fox was euthanized and sent for rabies testing uh, on Saturday, March 2nd. They say at this time, no other incidents have been reported with that fox. Uh, they say if you or your pets have been bitten or scratched, they say please seek medical medical care immediately. They also say for people that have pets that have uh, outdoor access, make sure they're up to date on their rabies vaccines. New this hour, a Holly Springs man is facing charges related to child sex abuse material. WRL's Brian Schrader is here now with a look at the disturbing details from the arrest warrant. Brian. Renee, these are serious charges. A first degree count of child sexual exploitation and 10 second degree counts. This is 33-year-old James Allen Campbell, who was facing those charges this afternoon. The arrest warrant said that he had a series of sexually explicit videos and pictures of girls apparently between 7 and 16 years old. We reached out to Holly Springs Police. They said because it's an ongoing investigation, they are not able to say anything. Just before this newscast, we confirmed that Campbell still was in custody at the Wake County Detention Center on a $500,000 bond.
very disturbing charges. Brian, thank you. Students at Wake County Schools may soon come home with information for parents on how to safely store guns. This plan to educate families on safe gun storage is something the school board will consider today. WRO's Kelsey Confey explains the reason behind this push to educate families about gun safety. Offering resources and information to parents about safe gun storage. That's the topic that's up for discussion today here at the Wake County School District headquarters. Although it's not common for students to bring guns to school, it does happen. In the last year, at least three adults have been charged after a student brought a gun to school in Wake County. In February 2023, the mother of a Wendell Middle Schooler was charged for improper storage. Last September, charges were filed against a woman after a gun was brought to Leadmine Elementary. And in December, a man was charged after a student bought a gun to Fuqua Verena Middle, then fired it through a window. We checked in with WREL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst ahead of today's discussion. She says this isn't just about warning parents to lock away their guns. It's also about reminding parents that you can be held responsible if your child does access a gun, uh, especially if if police later find out that the gun was not adequately or properly stored. We're not expecting a decision to come out of today's meeting, just a discussion. And that meeting is scheduled for this afternoon at 2.30. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, and Carrie. And next week, the WRL Documentary Unit debuts Unsafe North Carolina Kids Dying from Gun Violence. It sets out to uncover why kids in the North Carolina are 51% more likely to die from gun violence compared to young people in other states. The documentary includes a personal story from a family who experienced the grief of gun violence firsthand. You can watch it on WRAL online or on the app at 7.30 next Wednesday, March 13th. Now to our coverage of Super Tuesday. The two leading candidates in North Carolina's governor's race are out meeting with voters today. This morning, Republican Mark Robinson stopped at a polling place in Randolph County. He spoke with voters there as they cast their ballots. Robinson plans to stop at sites in Davidson and Guilford counties today. Democrat Josh Stein stopped at a polling place in Johnston County to greet voters this morning. He stopped by the church at Clayton Crossings and then made a stop in Durham at a voting location there. Stein himself voted on the first day of early voting. He'll be in Raleigh tonight with other members of his party to watch the results as they come in. On this Super Tuesday, WRL is your elections headquarters. If you have any questions throughout the day, be sure to check our WRL voter guide. You can find it on our website, WRL.com. And we have information on how you can vote, the candidates that are on the ballots, and what you need to take with you. We have all the fastest results. As soon as they are counted, we'll get them to you on WRL TV, WRL.com, and the WRL News app. Look for updates on all the big races every 30 minutes after the polls close on WRL News Plus, which you can find on Channel 34 over the air, Spectrum Channel 1257 on your smart TV and mobile devices. Throughout the night, on air and online, we'll have insight and analysis from our NC Capital team. For national coverage, NBC News will have a full wrap-up of Super Tuesday results from across the country at 10 p.m. on WRAL. Our team of reporters will have you covered with the local races at 10 o'clock on Fox 50. Then at 11 on WRAL, we'll have it all for you. The big local and state races and a recap of Super Tuesday from across the country. A massive plant fire in Michigan kills one person, but no one was in the plant at the time. The bizarre way that person was killed related to the fire. Plus, what harm can there be in drinking one diet soda a day? Why researchers say the habit can be bad for your heart. WRL News app brings you the best of WRL's reporting and technology resources everywhere you need it to be. Access news and information whenever and wherever you want. Download it to your favorite devices. Massive fire tore through a warehouse in Michigan, igniting explosions and raining debris as far as a mile away. Officials say the vacant building in suburban Detroit stored large butane and nitrous tanks, which is a possible cause of the fire. A 19-year-old who was about a quarter mile away was killed by a flying canister. At least one firefighter was injured in that fire. Traffic camera video shows the moment a small plane crashed in Nashville, Tennessee and burst into flames Monday night. The plane can be seen crossing into the frame, followed by the flash of an explosion. 
All five people on board that single engine plane were killed. The pilot made an emergency call reporting engine trouble and was given clearance to make an emergency landing at the airport but couldn't make it to the runway. The aircraft did not hit any buildings or vehicles as it crashed. Jury selection is underway for the father of Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly. James Crumbly faces four counts of involuntary manslaughter, each one representing a student who was killed in the worst school shooting in Michigan's history. James Crumbly's trial is expected to focus on how much he knew about Ethan's mental state and whether he failed to seek treatment for a son that would have averted the rampage. Crumbly's wife, Jennifer, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter on February 6th. Armed gangs in Haiti's attempt to take control of Haiti's international airport. The ambush coming just days after gang members freed thousands of jailed in the country's two biggest prisons. Haitian police and soldiers block gunfire from the gangs as they defend government sites while violence continues. A 72-hour state of emergency is in place. The U.S. Embassy has also suspended travel to Haiti. It recommends American citizens who are there to leave immediately. The Biden administration is shutting down the free at-home COVID test program. The reason behind that decision. Look at this beautiful view. The clouds have cleared out at White Lake and there's sunshine there and it's warming up quickly. We will see sunshine later this afternoon. Just give it a few more hours. You're watching WRL News available on YouTube TV and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. A historic ruling to protect abortion rights overseas is triggering new calls to guard reproductive rights here in the U.S. France has become the only country to guarantee the right to abortion in its constitution. Jackie Abanez reports French President Emmanuel Macron will inscribe abortion rights into the French Constitution this Friday as the world celebrates International Women's Day. Shockwaves sent around the world. <laughs> With France officially becoming the only country to explicitly guarantee the right to abortions in its constitution. French lawmakers overwhelmingly approved the bill Monday with a vote of 780 to 72. Many citing the U.S. Supreme Court's 2022 decision to strike down Roe v. Wade as their motivation to pass the landmark legislation. It's historical. We are all, as you see, very happy. And for us, it's a fundamental right. A total of 14 states in America have enacted full abortion bans with seven others enforcing restrictions on the procedure between 6 to 18 weeks of pregnancy. All around us, there are extremists working harder than ever to drag us back to a past that we thought was long over. And with 2024 being a presidential election year, Democrats are trying to amplify voter turnout surrounding the issue. First Lady Jill Biden reminding voters it was former President Donald Trump's Supreme Court picks who voted to terminate Roe v. Wade, especially when it seems likely Trump and President Joe Biden could face off in a rematch come November. He's bragging about killing Roe v. Wade. That was Jackie Abanez reporting. Many Republican lawmakers saw the repeal of Roe v. Wade as a win. And according to a recent report from The New York Times, former President Donald Trump says he is toying with the idea of implementing a 16-week national abortion ban if he gets elected for a second term. That ban would allegedly include exceptions for rape, incest, and if the mother's life is at risk. Starting Friday, the government will no longer supply free at-home COVID tests. The Department of Health and Human Services is suspending the program after a decline in case rates. The CDC has also eased COVID isolation guidance recently. Anyone who placed orders for free at-home COVID tests on or before Friday will still be able to get them delivered. Drinking diet soda and sugary drinks could boost your risk of a dangerous heart condition. Just one medium-sized fast food diet soda a day can raise the risk of an irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation by 20%. Many describe AFib as having a flutter or flip-flop in the chest. It can lead to stroke, blood clots, heart failure, and increase the risk of dementia and kidney disease. 
About six million Americans live with that condition. And folks love their soda. Well, that includes me. What about a little bottle? I need the caffeine. I need to get by somehow in the morning hours. <laughs> Elizabeth, I know you kind of sneak in a Mountain Dew now and again, right? <laughs> Who? What? what? <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a little bottle that, I mean, you know, it's just a few ounces a day. Oh, I hate those stories. <laughs> I hate these clouds, too. These clouds are supposed to be out of here by now. Um, it is gray in Goldsboro right now and at Apex as well as Chapel Hill. Fayetteville, though, nice and bright. The clouds that we had with us this morning are eroding, but you know, they're taking their time doing it. You can see partly cloudy skies here in Clinton. So there are a few spots that are sunny right now, but from the Triangle area north and east, we're just still waiting to see these clouds erode. So it, it will happen. We'll see some sunshine by, say, at least in the middle of the afternoon. Here's what's coming next, though, right on the heels of this last system. A lot of thunder and lightning along this front. We're not likely to see as much thunder and lightning with this. However, we are likely to see a good bit of rain, especially for the first half of the day. It looks like it's going to be uh, pretty wet out there for us. Nice and dry this afternoon. By the time we get to, say, 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, we're starting to see that rain pushing in from the west. It'll be a messy commute. The yellow and orange colors are an indication of some heavier rain. And the heaviest, steadiest rain that we see all day tomorrow will be in the morning. Once we get past lunchtime, say 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we see it just scattered at that point, so not as heavy, not as widespread. And then into the evening, it just continues to fizzle out. So it's not going to end necessarily uh, until fairly late in the day. But uh, once we get past, say, 1 or 2 o'clock, it starts to uh, taper off at least a little bit. How much rain will we end up seeing? Anywhere from about half an inch to an inch and a half is uh, what we'll likely see across our area. The computer models are within that range, and uh, we're in agreement with that. And then our next round of rain comes in on Saturday. Friday's likely to be dry, but we'll see increasing clouds. Saturday, as we get into, say, mid-morning or around lunchtime, we start to see that rain pushing in. Most likely, it will be heaviest down to the south, but, you know, today is Tuesday, and that's Saturday. We could easily see uh, the position of this rain shifting or the timeline of it shifting a little bit. So, if you have plans to be outside on Saturday, do keep checking back. It looks like we may see a bigger wave overnight on Saturday night, but right now, Sunday looks dry if you had plans to be outside, and you can pick Sunday definitely looks like the drier day. 100% chance of rain tomorrow. We've got it at a 60% chance on Saturday because right now it looks like most of the rain would be from the Triangle area southward. But as I mentioned, you know that, that could shift a little bit between now and uh, Saturday. So keep checking back. More sunshine uh, moving in as we get through the afternoon. These clouds are going to continue to gradually break up. Tomorrow we'll be back into the mid-60s because of the rain that we'll see for a good chunk of the day. Thursday looks beautiful, mostly sunny in 72. And then over the weekend, highs will be in the mid-60s. That's still going to be above normal, and we're going to be watching the timeline for that rain Saturday and maybe a few scattered thunderstorms. Saturday night, we spring forward. We go back to daylight time. We also go back to some cooler temperatures next week. Look at that high Monday, 56, and our normal high now is 60, so it'll be on the cooler side. There's a switch. All right, Elizabeth, thank you. What's old is new again, and a company in Wisconsin is making a huge impact in the music world with luxury turntables. If you're gonna drink a fine wine, you're not guzzling something. You're, you're gonna appreciate it on every level. The whopping price tag some are willing to pay for superior sound. And here's a look at the winning Powerball numbers. No one hit the jack jackpot last night. It is now $485 million. We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we are following for you today. Two parents linked to the Amber Alert of an eight-day-old baby from last week appeared in court today. Destiny Cothran and Justin Brown were arrested just before midnight and taken into custody. The judge gave both Brown and Cothran bonds of $2,000 each. They are both due back in court next month. Today is Super Tuesday, and North Carolina is one of several states and one territory with hundreds of delegates up for grabs. It's important to remember your photo ID when you go to vote today. That can be your driver's license, passport, or student ID approved by the State Board of Elections. Elections officials say the majority of voters have had ID with them. 695,000 ballots were cast early or by mail. Stick with us for election coverage throughout the day. Tonight, Raleigh City Council may vote to rezone the area around the new planned New Bern Avenue bus rapid transit line. The rezoning would affect 744 properties, raising the maximum height on buildings from three to five stories along that route. A public meeting will start tonight at 7.
The booth from the last scene in the Sopranos finale sold for more than $82,000. Nearly 240 people placed their bids on eBay. The booth is where Tony and his family sat as the screen cut to black, famously ending the hit series in mystery. The booth is from Holston's in Bloomfield.